Hey guys, welcome to our channel. I'm Kristen with Decorators Warehouse and I'm thrilled that you're here today. We're gonna walk through this super fun nutcracker tree from start to finish. Um, Nutcracker is so on trend for 2023, so I think you're gonna love this. We're gonna walk through our four-step process. It's a way of breaking our designs down into layers and achieving a really attainable design for your own home. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. We're gonna start with our first step, which is our Christmas tree topper. We're gonna compose our topper of a series of different sprays. So let's talk about that for a second. A good number of sprays is five. And when I say five, I mean five styles. Um, so for the styles that we're gonna use in this design, kind of your trick is you're looking for different textures. You'll notice all of my sprays are tall, so I want height and then I want a mixture of textures. So I have a uh, berry, I love this one, it's called the crab apple. We carry it in many different colors. And then this one, which, you know, it's just tall and skinny and it's gonna add a nice texture too. It's got a playful shape, which is great. Um, this navy one, it's like a boxwood stem, a leaf and then this wispy one. So these are all great textures. I've got something flat, I've got something round in the berry, I've got something wispy. So they're gonna combine really nicely. For this nine foot tree, I'm using three of each, so a total of 15 sprays. Uh, on my seven and a half foot tree, I'd use um, probably two of each. Now, if you like a full topper, if you've been in our store, we love full toppers and we use them all the time. So you can take these same five styles and you can scale this up. So if I wanted a fuller one, I would say maybe five to seven pieces of each spray. So making that a total of 30 to 35 sprays. But like I said, we're gonna use 15 in this one. So it's a little more scaled back. I'm gonna start with my crab apple. It's our biggest and bulkiest stem. So I like to do that one first and then I can work everything else around it. So my very first stem is gonna go straight along the pole and then I'll place my others around it. I'm gonna come in with my boxwood spray next. What I'm doing is alternating colors. I don't want it to be so heavy concentrated in gold. So I'm gonna save my other gold stem till later in my topper process. But this boxwood one's great too. It opens up nice. And I'm just gonna place these right in between the gold ones that are already up there. Again, I'm alternating colors. So my red stem is gonna come next and I'm just gonna open this up and place these kind of in between as well. All right, my navy one's coming next. This is a great texture too. It's just gonna fill in the space really nice. All right guys, just kidding. I actually found one more style that I was gonna use in my topper. So that actually makes a total of 18 sprays in this topper, six styles, three pieces of each. This one's nice too. It again, has a, like a good wispy texture and the added height. So let me go ahead and place those and then we'll move into step two. All right, step two, my favorite, it's the ribbon. And guys, I might've gone a little overboard. No, I don't think I went overboard because you could never have too much ribbon. So we are actually using four styles in this design. Um, this is my favorite. I am mad about plaid. I adore it. I use it in my own designs, but this is a great plaid that's really gonna pull this nutcracker theme together. This is gonna be my main ribbon through the body of the tree. And then as you know, I like to pair ribbons. So two layered on top, this is gonna be my under layer. So it's a nice, good holiday green velvet with the gold dot. That'll be on top. This will go underneath. And then I have two accent ribbons. So I have one roll of each. I'm gonna hang on to these until the end. And then these are gonna bring in a good, bold pop of black and white. And then this one I just adore. It's so fun. It's the Nutcrackers. And so again, we'll just use that adding pops in at the very end. All right, I've got my two ribbons on top of each other. First thing I wanna do is make a decorative edge. I'm gonna fold in half. This is called a fishtail. And it is basically just a diagonal cut. You can also do just an angled cut. That looks nice as well. I'm gonna start by making a pinch and then I'm gonna go directly into a loop I pretty much just folded that. And then see, I'm gonna stick it in my finger 
and then we want to do a hard twist because what we're doing is bringing that pretty side back up to the front. And let's see, I think I'm gonna do a two loop bow to start. So I'm gonna make another loop, pinch, twist. So I'm gonna tuck this bow right into that pocket and I'm gonna use the branches of the tree itself to hold it into place. Definitely have to fluff your loops. And then we're gonna go straight into a bigger loop. Make sure your ribbon's wired. I always love wired ribbon, I always use it. And what I want this to do is kind of billow out of the tree. And make sure when you're doing that, you know, don't, make, don't pull it tight. You want it to have this nice billowing shape to it. And then I'm gonna go, you know, a little bit into the branch, use the greenery itself to wrap it into place. And then I can do that nice decorative detail again, the fishtail at the end of this. Okay, my next section, I'm gonna basically repeat this, but I wanna move kind of to the midpoint over and then work it this way. So same thing, I'm gonna create a little pleat. I'm gonna start mine with one loop, twist, and then that'll go into my next series. The trick on ribbon and pretty much every layer of the Christmas tree is you are working in a pattern or a diagonal through the tree. So if my first one's here, my next one's gonna be here. My next one's gonna be here. And I'm basically doing that all the way around. I do that with everything. So when I get to the last layer, which is my ornaments, you'll see me do that as well. One of our most asked questions when it comes to decorating is how much ribbon do I need for my tree? And that's a great question. Um, now my answer, of course, is gonna be it varies. Uh, it depends on your preferences and your style, um, but kind of a good rule of thumb on a nine foot tree, we generally use three 10 yard rolls, three to four actually. So if you have a really full tree and you're going all the way around, I would say go on the higher end of that range and go with four. Um, but for this one today, it's kind of in the mid-size range. I'm using three of this 10 yard roll. Um, now this one's five yards, so I'm basically doubling it since I'm layering. So I have three of this, six of this. If you have a seven and a half foot tree, my recommendation is two to three 10 yard rolls. And then for a 12 foot, I would say maybe five to six rolls. All right, ta-da, the ribbon is done. I love ribbon. You can already tell it's gonna look beautiful once we add in all of our fillers and sprays. Um, it's really gonna take shape. So moving into step three, step three is our flowers and sprays layer. And one thing I like to start with, if I'm working with a bigger tree like this one, a nine foot, even a seven or seven and a half foot tree, I like to use what I call clusters. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a grouping of sprays and flowers. So for this cluster, we're using three pieces that we used in the topper. This berry, this airy one, and then a red poinsettia. So first thing I'm gonna do, I want to marry them. So we're gonna lay them on top of each other. You know, some will come forward, some will come back. So they look like one piece. And then we're gonna take our floral, we wanna angle it out a little bit, and we're gonna lay it just right on top. Now you can just insert it just like that, or if you want, you can take a stem and wrap it around. This is nice because next year when I go to decorate this tree, I can pull this out as an entire piece. It's almost like a floral bouquet, but for my Christmas tree. So for this nine foot, I have nine of these. If you want middle of the road to heavier coverage, a good rule of thumb is one per foot of tree on your cluster. So I'm gonna use nine on this nine foot tree. I'd use seven on a seven and a half foot tree. When you get into the bigger trees, like a 12 foot, I would use at a minimum of 12, um, but you could even go up to maybe 18 or 20 on a bigger 12 foot tree. All right, let's fold this in half. And then we are gonna run that straight along the branches. And then I can use the branch itself to twist around it and hold it in place. When I placed my ribbon earlier, I mentioned that I love to work in patterns or zigzags for a tree. 
I'm going to carry that exact same principle through this tree and I am going to work wherever I have holes in a zigzag formation. So since I'm there, my next one's going to be here. Then I'm going to move to here, going all the way around in that way. While I'm placing my clusters, let's go ahead and talk about this design too. So this is one of our Christmas tree bundles. And if you've been around Decorator's Warehouse for any length of time, I'm sure you've seen them, but they are full designer packages. They come with all the ribbon, flowers, ornaments, sprays, um, pretty much everything except for the tree base itself. And basically we ship it to you you know you have the video instruction so that you can actually recreate this in your home this is our nutcracker bundle but we actually have lots of different options available on our website which is decoratorswarehouse.com and also guys we realized too like this is um, a big goal so you know we're not all in a stage where this is something that we're able to or even want to do uh, we also sell all of the pieces individually and so if there's little elements or pieces from this design that you love, like the ribbon or some of the ornaments, you can purchase individual pieces on our website or in our retail store in Arlington, Texas as well. Once my clusters are placed, I'm gonna add in a couple single stem florals. So I have two beautiful poinsettias. I'm using nine of each and nine of each. So if we were to break down our bundle recipe, it is essentially one cluster, and six single stems. So that could be two flowers and four sprays, could be one flower and five sprays, but it's a combination of six in a cluster and it's one per foot of tree. So nine of these, nine of these, nine of these, and then I'm gonna be using nine of four different style sprays. And since my clusters are placed and I talked about that zigzag formation, I'm now gonna do a zigzag formation again using all of one floral at a time, and I'm basically working opposite. So I'll go here and then here. So working in the same pattern, but just opposite. All right, guys, let's add some sprays. <laughs> <laughs> I'm holding this just to show you kind of the amount of sprays that we're going to add into this tree. So these are my four styles. Remember I said I use six single stems, so two flowers, four sprays, uh, and I'm using nine pieces of each one as filler. So basically we're just going to start adding them through the tree again in that zigzag, working one style at a time. When your sprays come, they're going to come kind of flat. Let's just open them up. Somebody, I heard somebody refer to this as popping the spray, and that's a good term for it. We're just gonna pop them out. And then like this one, if you want those to look more curly, you can actually use your finger and twirl it around and that'll give you a nice little detail. Okay, and once it's open up, we kind of are gonna run with the stem angled at an upward slant and that's gonna sit down on the branch. You can pull it open just like that. The spray layer is where we really start to get a lot of dimension and texture in our design. So it's a, it really will start to take shape after we place all of these. Step four, it's our ornament layers. We're gonna add in a series of balls. Um, I have all the colors represented here. So the navy green, gold, red, um, these are going to be my fillers. So I, mean, I have different sizes, different textures, some of these net balls, this quilted ball. Um, I'm going to go ahead and place my bigger pieces first. I have uh, five of each of these, and then I have seven of this bigger one. It's really going to fill in the space nicely. So all my balls will get placed. And then I have these fun, more specialized ones. Y'all loved these last year, and they're wonderful too. So I have the red and green jewels. And then this guy is new and he is adorable, um, but I have that nutcracker as well. So I have a lot of bigger pieces on this design, um, which is good because it'll really fill in the space nice. So now I'm basically looking for gaps. Um, the bigger ones I can stick kind of deeper into the tree, while the more specialized ones I'll put closer in on the branches to the outside. Our ornaments are placed and now we're going to add on our final touch, which is our accent ribbon. I hung on to these two styles um, from earlier. I have one roll of each, they're 10 yard rolls. 
And what I'm gonna do is come in with a couple different accent options that we can do. The first one being what I call just the bow tie. And for the bow tie, we basically have one strip of ribbon. We're gonna fishtail each end. So essentially we're just creating a long tail. And then you have a cute little strip just like that. You can pinch it in the middle and it creates like a little bow tie. So anywhere that we see holes, like I could even put one right here on top of this if I wanted to. Um, and what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna open the branch back up, lay it there, wrap the branch back around it. So that's one way that we could do that. It almost looks like it's part of a bigger bow. And then another accents of one loop bow. And we are gonna fishtail the end, create a pleat. We're making a loop by folding. And then twist that back to the front. And then we'll fishtail this end as well. So you can kind of come in and pop these wherever you have space. And then a third option would just be a simple bow with two loops. A lot of people like to do big bows on the top of your tree. You could do that as well. Um, but for the bow, we're gonna pleat, make a loop, twist, and make another loop, twist. So, and then I can put this in just like that. And we're gonna go around the tree and doing one of these three accents. All right, you guys, there you have it. This is so easy that even you can do it. I know you can. When you think of this in four steps and break it down into layering, it makes it so attainable. And if this isn't your style, adapt it to you know a rustic design or elegant design to make it your own. Um, I also know like we all have our, our preferences and the amount of fullness we like. If you don't like an over the top tree, then take these general principles and scale it back to your taste. Well, we appreciate you coming along on our decorating journey. Uh, we hope that you hit subscribe so you can get the latest and greatest in terms of Christmas content. And then be sure to follow us on Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram as well. We hope you have a Merry Christmas and happy decorating.